Well, I have something special on my heart today that I really want to share with you. The other morning I was just reading the Bible, which I do often, and um, I was in Genesis chapter 1, looking at verses 26 and 27, and I'm going to read them to you and then tell you what's on my heart. God said, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and the likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then the very first sentence of verse 28 says, and God blessed them. And when I read that, I was it, it just came to me how many people in the world don't feel special. They feel like they're an accident. They feel like they're invisible. They feel like that nobody wants them. You know, there's a good number of people that have been adopted, and a lot of times people who, whose parents couldn't keep them or didn't want to keep them for whatever reason, they can have a lifetime of, of feeling bad about themselves. And it just makes me sad to think how many people don't really know how important they are. And so as I read that, I thought, you know, I'm going to go in the studio and I'm just going to sit and talk to people for a little while about what it really means to be able to say that God purposely created you. God has chosen you. He didn't just get stuck with you. You're not an accident. God purposely chose you and He has a good plan for your life. And not only that, you fit into His plan. God needs you. It says that He created us in His own image. Man is the only creation that is like God. Now, I didn't say that we are God, but we are created in His image and in His likeness. And it says that He created them, male and female, and God blessed them. I don't know what kind of a life you have, but I do know a lot of people have a really bad life. And it's not just because they have bad circumstances. As a matter of fact, I know people with bad circumstances that actually have a good life. And I know people with good circumstances that have a bad life. I don't know what kind of a life you have, but I do know from my own experience and from what I've learned in God's Word that a lot of the way we view life and how we feel about our life is based on how we feel about ourselves. Matter of fact, I think most people's problems, especially emotional problems and a lack of happiness come because they just really don't value themselves. And I want you to know that you are valuable to God. Now, if we're going to believe the, the story of creation, the biblical account of creation, then sometimes that gets at odds with people who believe in evolution. And I'm not going to get into a dissertation on how I feel about evolution except just to say that if you do believe that you just were an accident, uh, some kind of a big bang explosion at some point in time has eventually developed into you, or that you came from a monkey or an ape that evolved over millions of years and now, whoops, we have you, then I can understand why maybe you don't feel too good about yourself. But to know that you're created by God in His image, purposely, that says a totally different thing to me. Can I tell you right now, no matter who did not want you, God wanted you. And He still wants you. And you have value and you're special to Him. And you know, if, if I... If I look over then at verse 31, still in chapter 1, I find something that's even more exciting. And God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. So this is the story of how God created the whole earth and everything that we see, and man, in those six days. And on the seventh day, He rested. And I love the fact that after all of His work, in all of His creation, he stood back 
and looked at it and said, it is very good. And I think you have to realize that that's what God is wanting to say to you today. You're very good. You say, well, I don't always act so good. Well, you know, I don't always act so good either. I'm improving because I'm letting God work with me. But before I understood that God had created me and that I was special to Him and I had a purpose, I acted a lot worse than I do now. Because to be honest, if you feel like you're no good, then you're going to behave as if you're no good. I'm sure that there are even people watching today that you've thought a lot about suicide. You don't see any purpose in living. There could even be somebody watching right now and you're planning suicide. Well, I believe that what I'm saying to you today is going to change your plan because I want you to know, let me say again, no matter who doesn't want you, maybe you were married and the person you were married to rejected you and you feel like they didn't want you, you're wondering what's wrong with you. It could be a lot of different things. Maybe you weren't invited, invited to the office party and you wonder why they didn't want you. No matter who doesn't want you, God wants you. You're not an accident. He created you lovingly and purposefully with his own hand. And he's looking over you today and say, what I have created is good. Now, there's no doubt that a few years in the world that what God created gets messed up. There's no doubt about that at all. But there's a scripture I'm going to share with you later that tells us how we are recreated in Christ Jesus. So we were created by God. The devil, who is our enemy, made sure that we got all messed up. We, we, didn't, we don't think right. We don't act right. We don't behave right. We don't respond to people right. We don't, nothing seems to be right. But thank God in Christ we can be new creatures and there's always a new beginning. And maybe you're watching today and you need a new beginning. Well, I'm going to offer you an opportunity at the end of this little teaching to have that new beginning. And it really just involves a surrender to God of just saying, I'm not doing a very good job of running my own life and I'm going to just believe that what you say in your word is true and I want you to get involved in my life. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. So if we leave this and we go to Psalm 139, which is scriptures that I love to teach on, beginning in verse 13. This is David talking about how God created him. And I want you to think about this, not just in some abstract way, but I want you to think about this as if it was a reality and you actually saw this taking place. For you, God, did farm my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. So you see, even if your parents have said to you, well, I wasn't planning to have another baby when I found out I was pregnant with you. Well, your parents might not have been planning you, but God was planning you. And even when you were in your mother's womb, He created you with His own hand. He said, I will confess and praise you for you are fearful and wonderful and I will praise you for the awful wonder of my birth. Now listen to what David says. This is just so amazing. Then David said, wonderful are your works, O God. So he's talking about himself as a work of God. And he says, wonderful are your works, O God. I wonder how much better your life would be if you could see yourself as a wonderful creation of God that has value, that has purpose, that's been chosen by God, someone who is special. Do you know that you have talents and abilities and capabilities that nobody else on earth has exactly the same thing that you have? Now, we all have similar talents and capabilities, but I can tell you, you can do something that nobody else can do. And I don't want to see God have to go and try to get somebody else because you don't know who you are in Christ. Then in verse 15, he says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret, when I was being uh, intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. You saw my unformed substance, and, and listen to this, this is so good, and in your book... All the days of my life were written before ever one of them took shape. Now, isn't that pretty amazing? That means before really you were ever fully farmed in your mother's womb, God already knew you. 
He knew all about you. And every day of your life was already written down in God's book. He knows the end from the beginning. Is it possible for us to miss the best life that God has for us? Absolutely. Because all the promises of God come to us through believing. I'm wondering right now, what are you believing? Do you believe in God or do you believe that you were just part of some big bang thing that took place? Which really, if you want to get right down to it, and I'm not trying to start an argument with people who believe in evolution, even if there was a big bang, where did that come from? I mean, there has to be a beginning of everything. And nothing can just happen as a total accident. There has to be a plan. How can you create life out of non-life? God is the author and the giver of life, and we are created in His image. And you know, I might not be able to sit down and have some kind of a conversation with somebody who's a deep-thinking scientist that has all the answers about evolution. I don't have all the knowledge that they do, but I'll tell you what I do have. I have wisdom, and I'll tell you what I do know. I know God. And I can tell you that knowing God is eternal life. That's who we want to know. He wants us to come as a little child and believe. And I feel that there are some of you watching right now that you're desperate. You need to believe. You want to believe what I'm saying. You want to believe that you're special. You want to believe that there's a plan for you. You know, some of you have got a pretty good life right now, but I'm talking specifically to the people today that are lonely. You feel left out. You feel invisible. You feel like that you're not special. Nobody really cares about you, that you have no value. And I just want to simply say that those are all lies from Satan. He is a liar and the father of lies. And he's told you all that so there is no way that you can possibly enjoy your life. You know, if God created us intricately, that means that every part of us he cared about. Now, maybe you have different parts of your body or your personality that, that you don't, don't like. But you know what? That doesn't mean God doesn't like them. You know, I don't know. What, what do we, how do we can decide what's normal? Maybe, let's say I have a size 7 and a half foot. Well, maybe you have a size 10 foot and you think, well, there's something wrong with my feet. Well, what says that a seven and a half is the right size foot and a 10 is not the right size? You know, I have a unique voice for a woman. My voice is very deep. And there were a lot of years when I wished that my voice would have been soft and sweet, like a lot of women that I knew. And I actually went for a long time where I hated my voice. Well, you should not hate anything about you because everything that you are in your physical frame God has created. Now, sometimes we don't take care of ourselves and we need to take care of ourselves better. But the point is, is you don't need to hate anything about yourself. And if you have black hair, there's no point in wishing your hair was blonde. Or if you have a deeper voice, there's no point in wishing that you had a, a sweeter voice. If you're a little larger frame person than your little tiny friends that you know, there's no point in hating yourself because of that. God has a purpose and a plan for each thing that we are. And I could certainly make a point about my voice because now God uses it over television. It goes to many parts of the world and I get to share the gospel with people. And I've had numerous people say to me, your voice was so unique that I just had to stop and listen. Well, you see, this thing that I hated for a long time, God had a purpose for. And so I don't want you to hate anything about yourself. Now, you might remember that I said that there's a scripture that I want to share with you about how we are recreated in Christ. In other words, we get a chance for a brand new beginning. The Bible says that we are created by God. I've already told you the world gets involved and tries to mess us up. But then the Bible says in Ephesians 2 that we are recreated. We are God's own handiwork. Now, get a hold of that. You belong to God. You are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, born again that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time 
that we should walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. So here's my message to you. It's not too late for you. I don't care what you've done wrong or, or what you haven't done right or what all you may think is wrong with you or how many mistakes you may have made. There's no pit so deep that God can't reach down in it and lift you out. And God is not angry with you. He's actually using the words of my mouth today to draw you to Him because He has a better life planned for you. You know, Jesus died for our sins. God loved us so much. And He knew that because Adam and Eve sinned in the very beginning of time that that sin nature would be passed on to all men. But from the very beginning, He had a plan of redemption. God has always had a plan for your redemption. He always has had a plan for your restoration. God can take something that's messed up and old and worn out and He can make something brand new out of it. And that is good news. Let me say again, it's not too late for you. It's never too late for a new beginning in God. So if today you're thinking, well, you know, I'm so lonely. But you know, you don't have to be lonely if you know God. If you say, I don't feel loved, you don't have to feel that no one loves you if you know God. He loves you. God wants you. He chose you. He created you. And you have a purpose with Him. You know, in Jeremiah, I love what it says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's what God was saying to Jeremiah. And you know, when God gave that call to Jeremiah, Jeremiah was kind of fighting against it too. I'm too young. I'm not this. I'm not that. And he said, look, before I ever formed you in the womb, I knew and I approved of you. Well, you know, I like that because to be honest, when God says he knows us, I mean, he knows us. He knows everything about us. You know, somebody here that I work with might say, well, I know Joyce. Well, you know, they do know me, but if my husband Dave says, I know Joyce, he knows me in a completely different way. So then when God says that he knows us, wow, he knows every single thing about us. So God knows all about you. You're no surprise to him. And if you've made a lot of mistakes in your life, I don't know, perhaps you did something really bad before you even turned this TV program on today. Maybe you turned the program on accidentally. You, you normally don't even watch TV preachers. You don't even like TV preachers. You did, but for some reason, you came onto this program today, and there's a purpose in it. God had this day written in the book of your life before you ever showed up on planet Earth. And God is saying to you today, I know you. And I've still approved of you as my chosen instrument. Come on, I want you to get this. God approves of you as his chosen instrument. Now, that doesn't mean he approves of everything that you do. He doesn't approve of everything that I do. But who we are is different than what we do. The things that we do in life will come to an end and we may not do them anymore. But we're still going to be a person that God loves, that he created for a purpose. And so if you do not have a relationship with God, you need one. You can have an intimate, personal relationship with God. So many people say, well, what's your religion? Well, you know what? I don't think that Jesus died so we could all have a religion. Your brand of religion, my brand of religion, thousands of brands of religion. I believe that Jesus died so we could have an intimate, personal relationship fellowshipping, conversational relationship with Almighty God. You see, God wants to do life with you. He wants to be involved in everything that you do. And if you have not received Christ as your Savior, it is so simple. You can be recreated in Christ today. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away and all things become brand new. You can have a new beginning today. It's not too late for you. It's very simple. If you believe, and maybe you have never believed until this moment, but there's something in your heart that's saying, I think she's right. 
Uh, this feels good. This feels right to me. You know, we don't have to understand everything with our brain to believe it. I don't want you to spend your life thinking that you were just an accident that showed up sometime during a big explosion and that you evolved from some kind of an animal. I want you to know that God created you in your mother's womb with his own hand intricately and curiously and carefully and he has written down every day of your life. And I want you to know that Jesus died for all of our sins. He took them upon himself. And the Bible says that when God forgives us, he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers them no more. Now, you know what? If you're even a relatively intelligent person, you probably know a good deal when you hear one. And I don't know anybody that would want to pass this up if they really understood what I was saying. You never have to be lonely again. You can have the best friend that you could ever possibly have who will come to live on the inside of you, who has promised to never leave you or forsake you. Never. I'll be with you always, he said. You can have someone who loves you perfectly. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life. You know, when your life is over here, you're not going to just come to an end. Your body won't exist anymore, but your spirit and your soul will. Where are you going to spend eternity? You can spend eternity with God if you make the right decision today. I'd like to ask you, would you like to have your sins forgiven? Do you want to have a brand new start with God? Do you want to have a friend that will never, ever, ever leave you or forsake you? Do you want to start today believing that you're special that God created you and he has a good plan for your life. If you do, I would like you to pray this prayer with me. I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to pray it one sentence at a time and I would like you to pray it out loud after me because you're making a commitment of what you're going to do now with the rest of your life. So if you could just pray this with me right now. Father God, I love you. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died for my sins. I know that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for the way I've lived. I'm ready to turn away from sin and to live a life with you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. Come into my heart right now and help me be the person that you want me to be. Amen. Now you say, oh, it can't just be that simple. Well, it is. The Bible says if you believe and you confess that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Now I'm not going to tell you that you're never going to have another problem. I'm not going to tell you that the enemy's not going to come against your mind and tell you, well, okay, you prayed a prayer, but you know, you're not any different. I can tell you that you are different on the inside if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it. And I'm sure that some of you right now are weeping. You're, you're weeping for joy. You, you're realizing the way that you've lived and how useless it was. And you know, I want you to have something that's going to help you remember what I've said to you today. And so anyone who asks for it, we've got a little free book for you. It's called You Are Loved. You are loved. Free. It's free. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So we want to start you with your walk with Christ with something free. This is full of scriptures about the love of God and the peace of God and the joy of God and everything that has become yours today. All you have to do is uh, get online and ask for it. Give us a call and ask for it. And if you did pray this prayer with me today, then if you have any questions, whoever answers the phone here will be happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, just remember, this is a beginning, but it's not an end. And what I really want to encourage you to do is to learn what God has given you through studying the Word of God. And you may think, well, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. We've got all kinds of information on our website that's going to help you study the Word 
You can call. We'll, we'll talk to you about how you can do it. Watch the TV program every day. Maybe you turned it on accidentally today, but watch it every day and let us begin to teach you and instruct you in just what God has in store for you. And I just want to thank you for taking this time to be with me today. Like I said, this is something special that God put on my heart. And I believe that every person that was watching today, it was ordained by God that you watch. And whether you had never received Christ before and you received Him today, or whether you just needed to be reminded that you're special, that you're loved, that you're chosen, and you're not an accident, I'm glad that you were with me today. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of your life. I get to have a relationship with Him, not because of anything I've done or who I am, but because of who He is. I'm starting to...